her. But do you, know? do you also feel that I think that what sometimes happens is that other people feel judged just being in your presence. Like, do you do people have you experienced that in uh, your life? Yeah, maybe sometimes, but that's not on me. It's not my problem. Yeah, if yeah. They feel yeah. judged by me living the life I chose to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, I yeah. can feel bad about it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, not really. But I do think that that's something that happens in this society we live in, right? Uh, probably. Yeah. You know, I think it happened more in the past. Because also in the past, I I dealt way more with people that weren't like me. Pretty much all my friends at this stage are uh, are vegan straight edge, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I know a lot of people that aren't. But I'm, what I mean is like the close group of friends, um, they're vegan straight edge. So, in a way, I don't really... I don't remember the last time I was in the situation and like that. If you look example. at look at if but you I'm look sure back happens. now, because you're like in twenty five years doing this now, like will you always be doing this? Like, are you going to do this for the rest of your life? Doing this, like living this life. Yeah. Is what you mean? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You can't no. see this change. Mm. I know for sure that I won't change because I decide every day to live this way. Yeah. And it still makes sense. Mm-hmm. And because there's a meaning behind it. Yeah. And there's a reason behind it, behind like every action that I take or every, even every reaction. Yeah. Um, nothing will change because like I have uh, very specific views on the world and yeah. on uh, animal relationships and on uh, yeah. the earth and uh, the environment. And, and if you uh, compare the decision, because I think the decision of going straight edge was this was in the same uh, in the same time as the decision of going vegan, yes. right? So, is any of the two more important? Um, not really to me, and mm-hmm. that's because. Um, so they're equally impo- for you. It was equally important to make those decisions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They are equally important. Yeah. Although, like I said in the beginning, and maybe it was a little bit too confusing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that some straight edge people really see that and feel straight edge as a personal choice. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah, I just want to say that they even sort of just come have, together, right? Yes. Like they come together they as a... They complement each other. Exactly. In yeah. my opinion, they really complement each other. Yeah. And again, the victims are not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the consequences and the impact of both actions are not the same. So... Yeah. I care about all that. Mm-hmm. So... It's not that I care more about A and they care less about B. Yeah. I care yeah. about both equally. Mm-hmm. And, um, and with and of yours... Course, like, I think I, I'm more active on veganism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean that strategy is not important or, or is less important. But with your strong stance, like you have this really strong mm-hmm. stance specifically about, you know, drinking, addiction. You've, mm-hmm. You're just saying about, you know, my family members. You've seen things hands on. Um, do you like, do you, do you judge people with addictions? Like, do you see people on the street that obviously are drug users or dealers? And do you, do you, you know, feel that you judge these people Uh, because of your, your stance? Not really. Or at least I think I don't. Mm -hmm. That's my, uh, because what is your, what is your opinion on people with, uh, Um, with strong addictions and victims, right? Victims of society, victims of society. What would the solution be for, for these people with, the, with these strong addictions? Uh, well, they have to be helped, of course, if they want to. Mm-hmm. And there's like so many places like rehabs and uh, people from different communities help each other. Yeah. And there's so many things in so many places to help these people around the world that it's not hard to find these places. But not a lot of people that are in these situations want help. Yeah. Or Search for help mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or acknowledge that yeah, they're and that, in that's of course if, that they're but, struggling. But I'm sure we talk about that later with with Stuart with as well Stuart, because yeah. because Stuart actually Stuart comes from very different places. Yeah, than yeah, you it's because totally he he story. was he was actually addicted himself, mm. you know. So I think that I loved his yeah. episode, so I can't wait to talk to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See what he has to, to say today. No, but I mean, I think it's also interesting to to speak with you because you come from a very like, and and same with me as well. Like, also for everybody listening, I am also very much and very passionately drug uh, drug free, and uh, and I have been for a long time because 
yeah, of the, a lot of the reasons that you're saying, but also just wanting to be sober, wanting to be pure, wanting to not put any sort of, you know, uh, you know, just you don't want these toxic shit in your body, you know, you just don't want shit in your body, you know, and I, I think that's something that you also always say is like, you always want to be aware, like you always yeah. want to be yourself, you always want to be... And I you know, find some kind of... It, it is purity yeah. of being is also beautiful, I think. Yes, and I really value the fact that I decided to embrace my life and deal with frustration, happiness, yeah. unhappiness. Yeah. All, uh, the, all, the, all the emotions all the things. Exactly. we feel or yeah. might feel in our lives uh, sober. Yeah. Because I won't allow a substance to force me to laugh or to make me cry or to exactly. make me frustrated. Well, to already, you know, like, because like, they're just, they're just going to make these feelings stronger, right? And yeah. No they, matter what kind of some, feelings they are. Some substances amplify what you're feeling. Yeah. Others just numb you down. It really depends on the yeah. kind of yeah. the drugs you take. But, uh, but yeah, I really find uh, peace and I find a meaning in living a sober life. Yeah. And for me, that's revolutionary. Yeah. But also very good for me. Yeah. As in, it's super healthy. Yeah. And again, it represents what what I dream of society to, to, to become one day. Yeah, because this is your wish for everyone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that's a really beautiful opening for this. We're going to invite mm-hmm. Stu in soon. Thank you so much, uh, Miguel. And also, yeah, oh, okay. if, we ha- if you have any <laughs> questions, we're just going to invite Stu in and see what he has to say cool. um, about addictions. Because I think um, coming from, from his workshop series and, and the things that he has mentioned about addiction, I think that uh, I have some really, um, yeah, I think some really good questions mm-hmm. if I can say that myself but yeah, at least some questions sure that are really have. on my mind you're really good at that um, and uh, you can also ask me anything and um, so yes uh, let's invite Stu in alrighty welcome Stu so nice hello. to have you hello Carol happy to be well good evening hi there hi, hi Stu hi um, yeah no I was just introducing you already uh, and I had a bit of a chat with Miguel about uh, addiction because I thought it was uh, so interesting also your workshop series that you've been doing and I thought especially um, you know what addiction is you know and how you describe this I think in one of your first workshops you're describing it also as an illness and addiction is is you were saying not curable um, addiction you know is, is sort of like an obsessive compulsive condition and all that stuff it's, it's yeah. is it all kinds of stuff that you've experienced yourself personally um. Yeah, personally, yeah. Um, a lot of it comes from um, a lot of it comes from my experience with people who have been through um, Alcoholic Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and things like that. And um, I never did that myself. I, I I only sort of, you know, Glastonbury, the huge big festival. Where I was at Glastonbury, and you know, there's 180,000 people, and um, we were all selling drugs and. Everybody's doing cocaine, everybody's doing ecstasy, everybody's doing whatever drugs, heroin. And um, I I found the Narcotics Anonymous tent one day in the TP field, because that's where I used to hang out in the TP field quite a lot. So I thought I would go in just to see what it was like. And um, it didn't change me at all, do you know what I mean? I came out and sold more drugs than ever and took more (laughs) drugs than ever and, you know, partied without sleeping for four days. But... um, it gave me an idea and I went back to it of what the 12 steps are and what they use these 12 steps and all normal. I don't know what it's like in Amsterdam, but um, I think it's worldwide, the, the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. And um, it always struck me as a really useful, but a bit religious. You know, there was a bit, there was a bit of um there was a bit of God in it and a bit of God. As soon as someone mentioned God to me, I was like, no, I'm not <laughs> doing God. I, I don't do God. Um, I'm not, you know, like, I think I've, I've got, a, got a couple of the books I put just, they were actually here from the other day. And um, if you look at the third step, the, 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 the steps, it comes from this little book here. This is a really good book. Mm. Recovery by Lyndon Finley, Dr. Mm. Lyndon Finley. Okay. 
she was like the same as me. She really liked the 12 steps, but she never quite got God. Mm. And then you know who Russell Brand is. Russell yeah. Brand did his own, his own recovery book. Yeah. So when I realized that other people had recognized the usefulness of the 12 steps without the God, it sort of um, it sort of just made me remind, it just made me remember all the things and I reminded myself of all the people I'd known who had went through uh, this illness, this habit forming illness that you're, you're never ever cured of addiction. You're never ever mm -hmm. cured of an addiction. If people say, oh, I used to be a heroin addict, but now I'm cured, they're a liar. Mm. I'm not being honest. Uh, uh, you, you always crave heroin. You always crave alcohol. You always crave cigarettes. Mm. You, know? you just learn how to deal with that habit. Yeah. You learn how to deal with that habit. And um, Ayenga talks about it. He talks about it in, in sense of, right, um, replacing a positive habit, uh, replacing a negative habit with a positive habit. Mm. And then eventually, as a yogi, you'll understand you have to get rid of your positive habits as well. But yeah. you can't go, it's very difficult in yoga to go from um, lots of negative habits to go straight to the enlightened self, the, you know, this mm. enlightened being in this state of, of yoga. You, you've got to take some in between steps. And then, yeah. and, I, and I find it really useful to. Um, I'm a bit of an anomaly about this, so I never ever really think there's some people that can do what I did, and there's some people I have to teach differently. And yeah. um, for me, I just stopped. I just I'm a bit like Russell Brand. I just gave up. I yeah. just I just total 100% abstention on everything I've done in my life. I went from one extreme to the other, like that. Overnight, really, Stu? Absolutely, overnight. Just wow. like that's it. My my liver is failing. My kidney's not working very well. I feel sick. I feel tired. Um, why is this? Too much alcohol, too much cocaine, too much ecstasy, too much bad living, even though I'm a vegan. You know, it was times when I was a vegan and I was still doing the drugs, you know? Yeah. I was, I was like 100% healthy food or healthy-ish food. No animals, no dairy, nothing. But then lots of drugs. And then I just realized I can either replace slowly and do things slowly and progressively or just stop. And then yeah. I just stop. It was the same with pot when I gave up marijuana. I used to smoke a lot of marijuana. After giving up everything else, I was like, well, I'll still smoke pot. That gives me one vice. I'll still have a joint. I'll still be able to, you know, luxury and marijuana whenever I want. I can smoke charis. I can have some skunk when I want it. I can eat it. I can vape it. I can. And then I thought, now you just got to stop doing everything. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, and then I just gave up everything. Wow. So I don't expect people to do that. The same way I gave up, um, I gave up cooked food like that. Everybody's addicted to everybody's addicted to cooked food. Everybody, yeah. everybody, whatever you say, we are not we are not genetically and we are not physically cooked food eaters. There's no other animal in the world that's got a cooking stove and some heat and fire and makes you know makes does food with food what we do. No other animal does that. Mm. So I, I and my philosophy at one time was right. I'll just give up all cooked food and become 100% raw foodist straight away overnight same yeah, thing yeah, yeah. so yeah. i don't ex i don't expect people to do that but i think you have to um, treat every individual idiosyncrat idiosyncratically like yeah. you've got to treat them all differently and what's good for me isn't great for someone else mm. and 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 i found through years of experience and talking to lots of different people replace a bad habit with a good habit yeah, yeah, because that's what you were talking about in your last workshop. I, I thought yeah, that really... I think that's a really important thing. Yeah, uh, Ayenga talks about it. Other yoga teachers talk about it. That you you can take that quantum leap. You can just leap into yeah. that into this state of yoga, but mm -hmm. it's probably more practical for most people to yeah. Um, yeah. to change slowly. He also talks if you read light on life properly. He talks about the way we acquire habits, and that's very interesting as well. Mm. He sees it as a pond, and yeah. at the bottom of each pond, there's a, a sediment, a sediment of each habit. 
So your smoking habit, for example, every time you have a cigarette, you, you make the mound at the bottom of the pond a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit 